Kelly Hoppen, MBE, is one of the most celebrated interior designers in the world. She discovered her calling at the tender age of 16 when she designed her family friend's kitchen. She has never looked back. Instantly recognizable, Hoppen's work spans more than 40 years. She has designed homes, yachts, jets, bars, and tower blocks. Her style is a fusion of East meets West, clean lines and neutral tones. She is the so-called Queen of Cream. Welcome to the House of Hoppen. Here we are in Kelly Hoppen's house. It's, I've never been in a place like this before. It's completely amazing. I feel like I've stepped into a Bond film. Um, <laughs> when you bought it, um, did it look more or less like this? Nothing like this. I literally walked through these doors into what was a complete um, derelict building with rubble and mess. Like actual rubble. I mean, there were no walls, no ceilings, no, I mean, it literally was nothing. And I literally ran from one end to the other, just screaming, going, I cannot believe it, I want to buy it today. I've read that you, um, you have an uh, outsized imagination that you can go into a derelict building and just see it like that. Yeah, so basically... You, did you see, is that what happened here? I immediately came in and knew exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, immediately. So you, saw, you saw what we have here, you saw... In my head. In that opening moment. Because I have this ability, I'm very dyslexic, but I have this photographic uh, memory. But I also have the ability to design something in my head. I created all these runners and bands and structures. So for me, it was all about creating the line. So when you come in from the entrance hall, this shelf will run mm -hmm. all the way through into the other room over there. And then you look at textures. I wanted to have a six meter sofa, which was insane. I think it's the biggest sofa I've ever seen. It's probably the biggest sofa Maybe it's the I've biggest ever sofa seen. in London. I've always wanted to have a table as big as this and it looks insane but once you start inviting loads of people from all walks of life we have these dinners about every six weeks and it's interesting because your home has changed in the sense that you're always around a kitchen whereas in the old days it was very much a kitchen, a dining room, a living room, you only used a special living room when you had special guests. My only worry is that if, if you ever invited me I'm quite clumsy and I might um, splash wine all over your white sofa. Well then you'll never get an invite for dinner. <laughs> Look, but, I happens. mean, you must have clumsy friends who, who spill things on beautiful fabrics. Really, Is that we're a all problem? quite grown You're up, all grown I up. think. Okay. But, you know, it all looks immaculate because mm -hmm. I'm that kind of person. Yes. But if something spills, you get it cleaned. The home is something that fits you personally. So you just said to me, you know, I'm a, if I came for dinner and I spilt red yeah. wine, well then if you're designing that and that's how you feel you want a more relaxed environment, then you design your home around that. Plastic sheets. Plastic sheeting, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, you know, that can come back yeah. into fashion. This room in here is probably one of the rooms we use the most. We're in here every single day. We're great movie watchers. TV. Watching yourself on movie. Yeah. No, but I mean, for us, it's this is like our room. This is where it's cosy, and I design these big chairs, and I like the way it looks. Things in rows, things very equal. So very most symmetrical. evenings, you could be found snuggling up in your snug. Yeah, most people watching think we're out absolutely every fabulous. Night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you, when you were a dragon on Dragons Den, did you watch episodes of it? Yeah, I mean, I, I still watch it. I, yeah. I think it's a great show. And uh, I don't like watching myself back on television, but I'll watch other shows. So we are in the Dragon's Den. You are in the Dragon's Den. This is the Very Dragon's good. Den. This is like the that. actual Dragon's Den. Hey, yeah. That's the best thing you've said all day. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very I'm good. Um, it's actually the Lion's Den. How would I know for certain if I walk into one of your um, spaces in Hong Kong or New York or here, how would I definitely know that it's you and it's not someone else? You just would. <laughs> well, partly maybe well, because of I your mean, use of colour. Colour um, and this kind of grid system. Okay. There are certain things that I will use a lot of, like, you know, the, the sort of panelling over there on the wall. Um, the co the colour is a, is, a, is a big giveaway as yeah, well. Yeah, so from and the beginning... Um, did you know that sort of taupe, beige, these yeah, muted colours were your colours? Always, from, from the moment when you were I 16. I was obsessed with the colour taupe. So the first things I did, there was a great 
shop in Great Portland Street. And they used to sell all the kind of fabrics that went underneath upholstery. Right. And I was obsessed with Fortuny because my mother had taken me to Venice and I had gone to see the Fortuny fabrics. And so I started to design using sort of utilitarian calicos and ticking, but then adding shots of beautiful Fortunies. And that is how the style became mine. And then I went to America and saw what they call a mushroom, and taupe suddenly became my, my signature. Do you, ever, do you ever wake up one morning and just think, no Never. more no more taupe, I, I want, well, you're wearing a beautiful red dress, you know. I like to live in neutral interiors, and I believe that we get bored very quickly, and I like to put color, like next month I might have amazing pink flowers okay. down the table. There seems to be a fine line between design and actual art. Your lights seem to be, you know, could, they could be sculptures. It was really important, whatever was there looked good from above as well as okay. underneath, and I wanted to have something that was big enough, but also was transparent. So I kind of just... They look like a great sort of bubble or like... They've been called a lot of things. Have they? <laughs> um, can we go upstairs? Uh, yes. might be my favourite room in your amazing house. You've designed everything, I believe. The bath, the light. Taps. I think mm -hmm. bathrooms are really important in a house. Beyond just washing? 100%. It's the whole sort of, you know, my whole East meets West philosophy, mm -hmm. which is what I started 40 years ago. It's about, you know, that, that there's time for you. Mm -hmm. So your home is very much broken down into the space that you share with people and mm -hmm. friends and family mm -hmm. and and then there's a bathroom which is very private. Other designers also say that their philosophy is East meets West. What does it mean? So for me it was the simplicity, the harmony, the levelness of the East that I loved, the textures, the minimalism-ish, mm -hmm. not a yeah. minimalist, but that kind of yeah. purist feel. And then what I loved about sort of international design, so to say France and Italy, was that kind of frivolous, um, movement and okay. kind of madness of one piece that was very eclectic or vintage. You've said you want to create spaces which are soothing. Is that right? Um, um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going you're, with. You're, you're so soothed, you're falling asleep. <laughs> so, I've yeah. said you have. And it's just simple. It's beautiful. End of. End of. End it's beautiful. Of. You're very lucky I've let you into my bar. I feel very lucky. Right, well, I'm not letting you in my bedroom. Okay. So, yes, there's a little bit of colour in here, which will shock you. Oh, yes. So, this is just a small guest room, but it's cosy. So, again, this is about scale. Mm -hmm. So, it's a small room with low ceilings, but I've got the biggest oversized bed in here because that actually kind of makes it feel bigger. Having a big bed makes a yeah. small room bigger? Yeah. So you might as well do that and actually kind of frame it and have a beautiful old vintage light and vintage bedside tables. And here's one of your famous runners. Yeah, so you've got, you've got I mean, here's a perfect example of a runner going across, a runner down the centre, a runner here, a runner here. There are runners everywhere. Oh, it's lovely. You see, you want to touch everything because yeah. it's all about texture. It really is, yeah. And, no, it's beautiful. And see the leather and then the, the texture it. there. Yeah. It's the same way as you taste food mm -hmm. and you digest it. It's it's the same and it's you know whether it's translucent glass to heavy to metal to leather to lighting and that's how you create the layers in essence what is the perfect bedroom mine of course well, of course it is <laughs> but i mean what, i mean well, the, a bedroom is for sleeping in um mainly the um, most important thing in a bedroom is a comfortable bed yeah right for me it's the bed it's the textures, the feeling, and a television. We have it. It's done. Done. Kelly, it's been an honour and a privilege to be in your house. Thank you very um, much. Thank you so much. No, it was a pleasure. <laughs>